you would have no intelligence. Hell Satan. Hell Satan. January 3rd, 2021. Installment number three of YouTube's Darkest Channels is released. I legit am scared. The episode showcased multiple disturbing accounts, with one in particular being Leather Smoke Me, an account run by a man who, along with his fans, fetishized his own deterioration and subsequent death due to smoking. Before this video aired, I would briefly explore the entirety of this smoking fetish community, discovering a countless number of these channels participating in it, with one of which being run by a 19-year-old high school student named Dylan Pontney, by far the youngest person I had ever seen taking part in this. I would only watch one of his videos in passing, using that along with many others as evidence that this trend did in fact exist. However, at the time, I could have never known how twisted that obscure channel truly was and how much darker it would get, as just a few months later, Dylan's life would take a disturbing turn and one that would forever immortalize his channel as one of YouTube's darkest. Before we get too far into this, I want to thank today's sponsor, Raycon. Raycon is truly disrupting the electronics industry by making great sound affordable for everyone, as their wireless earbuds start at just half the price of other premium audio brands. Co-founded by Ray J, it's no wonder celebrities like Snoop Dogg and Mike Tyson are using these earbuds, as they come in a wide variety of fun colors and patterns, with multiple fit options for everyone, all without the dangling wires or stems, and they have the performance to match their look. With six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a compact, comfortable fit. Recently, I've been wearing mine while walking my new puppy, Kuma. So if you would like a pair of your own Raycons, click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash Nick Crowley and you'll get 15% off of your Raycon purchase. And with their 45 day free return policy, you can try them today practically risk free. Addicted to Dying Slower. This was the caption for Dylan Pontney's first video on Instagram, as he's shown taking a long drag of his cigarette. And looking back, it was this account that provides the context needed to understand Dylan, as well as his YouTube channels, as videos like this were the basis of his content, and those watching absolutely loved it. Commenters would say things like, looking good, man. You're so sexy, addicted lung your face is cute, and very hot smoker, smoker fetish? He would never respond to that final question, though the answer wasn't hard to find. Dylan would post these videos shirtless while acknowledging and thanking the fans who were leaving sexual comments, even mentioning a potential start of an OnlyFans account. He knew what he was doing, and his account was a fetish page through and through, but not in the way that you would typically expect. Dylan clearly loved smoking, but more specifically the dark side effects that came with it, as he would hashtag things like cancer and lung f as well as even stating outright that he thought cancer was good. And he was being serious too, as he'd even take pictures of the warning labels on cigarette packages, which featured photos of withering and dying individuals, as they were designed to scare people away. But rather than deterring him, Dylan would openly say how much he loved the sight of them, as it showed what could happen to him someday, an idea that Dylan absolutely loved. Dylan Pontney wanted to get cancer and die before his audience's eyes, much like Leather Smoke Me had done years before, along with many others across the web, with his Instagram providing all the context we need, context that would make his YouTube channels all the more concerning. Dylan had three channels, one of which going under the same name as his Instagram, along with another called Jericho Chris, the same account that I had found way back when researching in December. And both accounts consisted mainly of his smoking videos. And quickly, Dylan would start to amass a few hundred views per video, as viewers were watching eagerly to see the young man begin to wither. It's a concept that's dark enough, especially considering his age. But as mentioned, Dylan had three total channels, with his third proving to be the darkest. The channel would go by the name of Juniper Crossing, 
and again feature more smoking clips. Only, unlike his other pages, these clips didn't make up the majority of his content. In fact, the channel itself was dedicated to a whole other rabbit hole here on YouTube. And it's one that we've been down before. See what I'm talking about? That is true power and true free will. Basically, we're all trapped on an iron grid. Um, our cells are literally keeping us trapped on planet Earth. Um, you need to get to the center of the flat Earth before you're dead. Um, or you will expire of your own stupidity. Blood Over Intent, Proof of Life, Quasi-Luminous. This was the title of Dylan's second upload to the Juniper Crossing channel that would go live back in December of 2021, clearly in reference to what has now become one of the largest and most intriguing rabbit holes on all of YouTube. We explored the mystery way back in the day, the Cult of Saturn. It's a group that believes an apocalyptic event is imminent, and the only way to survive is to put your name in Satan's Book of Life a book reserved for the first 144,000 people who partake in a ritual known as blood over intents. For the ritual, you write your intentions down on a sheet of paper and then spill your blood over it, which supposedly manifests your intentions as well as puts your name in the book of life, essentially securing your salvation. But in order for it to fully work, you must record the ritual and post it here on YouTube. It's one of the first big rabbit holes that we explored on the channel, and it was uncovered that the man behind the whole movement is named Mark Braun, or as he goes by on YouTube, Quasi-Luminous, which Dylan references in the title of his video. Mark believes that he is Satan himself, and the followers of this movement believe the same, despite the fact that in reality, he's just a genuinely disturbed guy. Now, fellow YouTuber Blame It On Jorge has, in my opinion, the best breakdown of this mystery, so I recommend watching his video on it for further details. But all in all, it's an incredibly twisted community, something that became even more apparent to me, as every now and then I still receive bizarre threats from certain members of the group, despite having posted that video over a year ago. Nicholas Irwoy. Nicholas Irwoy. Nicholas Irwoy, you were in the pocket of fog, have you seen it? Nicholas Irwoy, you were in the pocket of fog, have you seen it? Nicholas Irwoy. But out of all the videos that I've seen associated with this group, Dylan's truly stand out. Most people who take part in this will simply prick their finger with a pushpin in order to spill their blood, but Dylan's approach is a little different and much more violent. Rather than gently jabbing himself with a pushpin, Dylan instead slams it into his finger over and over again, in most cases pushing the pin clear through his thumb, in one side and out the other. And though I can't fully show you an example of this, you can understand the force he's using just by listening. There's a real darkness to this Juniper Crossing channel, as it's essentially the combination of two YouTube mysteries we've covered in the past, both of which being incredibly concerning in their own right. I mean, this is a channel run by a kid who wants to get cancer and die, while at the same time immersing himself into one of YouTube's darkest cults. And what's also obvious when watching these videos is there's a real anger to Dylan which is fully on display when he jams the pin through his finger, as well as on his Instagram page. We can see that his bedroom walls are filled with holes, likely as a result of Dylan punching them. He was clearly dealing with some very serious issues in regards to his mental health, and unfortunately, things would only escalate from this point on. From here, he'd begin to fall down into a conspiracy rabbit hole, posting about the earth being flat, stating that humans are being farmed, and that our world is just one big prison. Theories that he would begin to push more and more on his channel as time went on, further showcasing what appeared to be the deterioration of Dylan's mind, and posts that would all lead us to his final upload, a video that will forever prove to be the darkest he'd ever make. 
on the morning of March 15th, 2021, Dylan would post a video titled, Smoking in a Car, Full Vid. It would feature no further description. The clip shows as Dylan jokes around with his father on their way to Dylan's school as he enjoys his early morning cigarette, which in his words, was the best way to start the day. He then asks his dad if they could visit his nana after school and the two would start to plan out their day. Dylan then finishes his cigarette before shutting off the camera. He would never post again. Not just on his YouTube account, but on his Instagram as well. In fact, no social media belonging to Dylan would ever be updated from this moment on. The video would go live as soon as Dylan would get dropped off at school, and from there he would start his day as usual. That morning he would sit in his classroom at Christ the King High School, the same way he would do any other school day, only today was different. For reasons unknown, at roughly 9.30 a.m., Dylan would stand up from his chair before pulling a knife out of his backpack right in the middle of class. He would then proceed to turn to the girl sitting next to him. Before anyone could realize what was happening, Dylan would stab 17-year-old Jennifer Winkler and quickly leave the classroom and the school itself. It happened too quickly to react, and in an instant, Jennifer would be fatally injured, later passing away in the hospital before her father could say goodbye. Dylan would attempt to run but would only make it to a nearby neighborhood before being caught and arrested for murder. Just barely a few hours ago, Dylan was sitting with his dad planning out his day and there was no sort of indication in this final video that just moments later he would take a life in cold blood. And even more shocking of all, according to the victim's father, there was seemingly no bad blood between the two. As a matter of fact, they were at one point neighbors, though they never really hung out or talked. The attack was completely unprovoked and seemingly without reason. According to Dylan's own dad, he was a troubled kid who struggled daily with mental health issues, but in his own words, he said he believed that Dylan was making strides and starting to get better but his YouTube channel paints a different story. It showed a young man who had seemingly no will to live, a man that wanted to die, and a young man who was clearly dealing with intense and very concerning anger issues, all leading to him cutting short a life for seemingly no reason at all. And just based off of the way that Jennifer's dad describes her, well, it seems like our world lost an amazing person that day. He was bright, smart, creative. She was, she was just Denny. I'm gonna miss her and I...
after I eat my Jimmy Jones and drink my heat and my hot Asian wife. I'm gonna squash you like the bug you are. Mr. Satan, everybody! The angel of death is gonna find you, motherfucker. Her up for them. We shall fix it. Hey, believe me. Go off for them. We shall fix that. Believe. I don't care if you're CIA, intelligence, whoever it is. You have no intelligence. You're so silly, retarded. The first Fisher King was a man called Bron.